Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and when I was getting the DF Robot motors for the motor testing video, link in the description if you haven't seen that one, DF Robot asked if there was anything else on their website that I wanted to take a look at. When I asked them for this particular lift kit, which I found for one of their educational products, they told me that it was not suitable for combat robots and not to expect big things out of it. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we are going to test it for use in combat because Nothing really is made for combat. Uh, most things made for combat are custom made by us, but every now and again you can find things out in the wild that might actually be useful for a combat robot. And in this case, I think we might be on to a winner. This specific kit surprised me somewhat. Not only is the entire thing made of alley, but there are press fit bearings in every single joint. This thing moves really, really freely. Uh, and it does that at the moment because I have it disconnected from the servo. And then on top of all of that, the most impressive thing is that this blue servo, which looks like all of the really cheap servos you'll find absolutely everywhere, is a full metal gear servo. It is not a plastic gear servo, which is really, really impressive. And uh, makes me feel like this could actually be at home in a combat robot. Now, they sent me two of these kits. So we are going to take this second one and build that right now. So the build process here is pretty easy and you'll note that this one again I haven't attached the servo horn and that is because it is much much better to attach the servo horn once you've got the electronics done. You get the electronics done, force the servo to the lowest position and then attach the servo horn so that you know that the lowest position here is the lowest position on your radio and all of that fun stuff. Uh, the only kind of slight issue that I found was that the link on their website to the instructions for this is actually for the instructions for a different thing. Uh, I will leave a link to the direct instructions for these uh, in the comments down below. Yeah, so there we go. That is the actual thing all done and dusted. So now we need to get it finished by hooking it into some electronics. But first, we are of course going to put it in a chassis. So this is a chassis very uh, loosely based on the actual testing jig that I set up before. It's a two part lid. So the first part locks in here and has the actual thing mounted to it, the whole lifting mechanism mounted to it. And then that leaves us a back part of the lid, which allows us to get the motors and the electronics in and out as well as the battery switch. So this has come together pretty well. I'm actually pretty happy about how all of this has gone. Uh, the only real problem with it is that, uh, as you can see here, it tips over forwards quite a bit. It actually needs more weight at the back, really, 
uh, which wasn't something I was really accounting for. And it's mostly because this whole setup up the front here is about 50 grams. So there's only about 100 grams everywhere else and some of that mass has to be underneath the actual um, weapon because otherwise it just doesn't work basically uh, so yeah there's a little bit of a balance problem it does drive properly when the weapon is down but as soon as the weapon is up a it can overbalance but b even if you just raise it a little bit the uh, wheels don't have any traction and i think that's partly because i have a little standoff let's turn this guy off again have a little standoff in under here which I used in the testing video as well as the third point but in this case we might want this thing actually scraping along the ground while uh, the lifting arm is up might be an idea I'm gonna cut this off and we'll work it out I mean if this doesn't work then I don't know what's gonna happen because uh, I'll need to reprint everything basically actually let's do another test first So I've been messing with this for about half an hour now, I'd say, and I've done basically every possible configuration of this. I moved the battery and all the mass around inside the robot to the back. I then moved it all back to the front and flipped the whole weapon stack up so it was facing out the back side of the robot rather than out the front side of the robot. Uh, and then I've put on bigger wheels and tried other different wheels. I haven't actually cut the bottom skid off yet, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Uh, because, yeah, we're still having troubles where as soon as you lift the uh, arm up, you just don't have any drive at all, which is not great. Uh, so I think the biggest problem with this setup, uh, setup as it actually currently stands is that not only is it 50 grams, but it's fairly large. So you can have a look, it is longer than 99 red balloons, and that's just the actual weapon stack up. I'm just trying to get that lined up there. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's about the same size, but it is a pure weapon stack up, which is longer than 99 red balloons. I'm sure that, look, I might be able to mess around with this for a very long time and finally get a design that is stable and works. The only problem is that once you get a design that is stable and works and drives around with the weapon in whichever position you leave it, the problem you're going to have then is you're going to try and lift 150 grams at this distance away from this motor. And that's a lot of leverage force tipping you down and not a lot trying to lift, like to keep you on the ground because you've only got 150 grams yourself and some of that is either going to be on the leverage point or in front of the leverage point which means that the actual robot isn't going to lift anything because it's just it's too long the lifting arm is too long you will tip yourself over like this before you actually manage to lift anything up i think i'm not a hundred percent on this uh, as you've seen in my channel i don't build lifters all of that often so i could be very very wrong on that front but uh for my first little experiment with this particular kit as a lifter, I'm not entirely sold. It's a good fun kit, I really like it, and again, I'm quite impressed with its build quality, but I don't think it's gonna fit on a 150 gram robot, or at least not uh, fit successfully on a 150 gram robot. I do wanna see how this aluminium stands up against a nasty plastic spinner, because this type of thing I would really only be putting in the non-destructive league anyway. So let's do that to round out this video. Let's do a quick bit of destructive testing.
Ah, yeah, that didn't go particularly well. There's a lot broken about this right now. Not only are the forks broken, but the actual mounting plate for the forks are broken. The arms are all bent and twisted up. Uh, but I will say to their credit, it does still actuate properly. Even with the arms as wavery and bent and crazy as they are, it does actually still work kind of sort of mostly. Uh, to the point that I honestly reckon that if I had a plastic set of forks on here rather than this metal set of forks, this thing would survive an event. Uh, maybe not a full event, but it would certainly survive a couple of fights. Um, and yeah, it would actually work for that entire time because that, yeah, just seemed to be fairly well okay, other than, yeah, this front plate being buckled and mangled and me not putting Loctite on any of this. But yeah, this back plate in here is totally fine. It's just this outer plate, which is bent and mangled and buckled. Having said that, that type of testing was a little extreme because, uh, yeah, 99 Red Balloons is not the type of robot that you would normally come up against in a non-destructive class. So that was uh, probably the worst case scenario that this thing could ever be expected to fight through. So it did pretty well on the whole, I reckon. Yeah, so there we have it. Look, I think this particular kit may not be uh, the most suited for combat robots. It's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit fragile, although it is put together really, really quite well. I mean, it doesn't look like any of the nuts or anything popped out. I think it all just is still mostly together. It's just the arms and stuff that bent up. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit awkward to fit into a design. So I don't think it's particularly a uh, combat robot thing. There are three other uh, attachments for this particular STEM educational kit, which I might try as combat robot parts in the future. Uh, if there's anything out there that you think might be an interesting thing to try in a combat robot, uh, let me know and I'll get in contact with people and see if I can uh, get some of those as well because it is interesting trying to find off the shelf things that might actually uh, turn into combat robot parts. This was fairly close. Uh, it's just not quite there. <laughs> oh man, I need to uh, fix this thing up. It's, um, I think actually mostly the problem is that the screws are coming undone, which is a, definitely a me problem and not an it problem. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.